In this video, we're going to talk about the internals and actions performed by an SDN switch, as well as how that switch interacts with an SDN controller. The topology we'll use for this example has two switches, switch 1 and switch 2, connected by a single link on port, which connects port 1 on switch 1 to port 2 on switch 2. We'll also have two hosts, one connected to each switch, with the IP address 10.0.0.1 and .2 for host 2. Within each switch is a flow table. This flow table is used to define what actions should be applied to packets that enter this particular SDN switch. We define which packets a particular action should be applied to by specifying a series of match criteria for each entry in the table. These match criteria can be defined over fields in the Ethernet header, IP header, TCP or UDP header, or potentially other headers as well. So, we could define match criteria over the IP source, IP destination, and protocol fields. We'll also define a series of actions that should be applied to packets matching a particular entry in the flow table. The actions can include dropping a packet, sending a packet out a particular port, sending the packet to the SDN controller, modifying fields in the packet header, or performing other actions that we won't talk about here. Let's now add a sample entry to our table to send packets arriving on port 3 or port 2 on this particular switch to our host H1. In other words, if a packet is destined for 10.0.0.1, we want to send it out port 1 such that it reaches switch 2 and eventually host 1. So we'll install an entry in this particular flow table to say that if the destination is 10.0.0.1, our action is to send out port 1. We're not going to specify values for the source or protocol fields because we want packets going to host 1 to go out this port regardless of their source or protocol. We can install a similar entry for host 2. Again, we'll specify that the destination is 10.0.0.2. We won't specify an IP source or protocol and we'll specify an action of sending out port 2. Now, let's assume that we have a TCP packet whose source is 10.0.0.100 and whose destination is 10.0.0.2. When this particular packet comes in, we'll match it against the entries in our flow table and apply the actions for any entry that matches. So, in this first case, the first entry is looking for packets going to 10.0.0.1, which this packet is not. However, it will match the second entry, which is looking for packets going to 10.0.0.2, and send the packet out port 2. Now let's assume that we also had a third entry in our table that was matching all TCP packets. So we won't specify any values for the IP source or IP destination fields. We will specify a value for the protocol field, and assume that these packets are going out port 4 on this particular switch. Now, this packet matches not only the second field, because its, IP, because its destination is 10.0.0.2, it's also going to match this third entry in our flow table because the protocol is TCP. In this particular case, we need to tell the switch which of these rules should take priority. So, every entry in the table also has a priority field, where a higher number or a larger number means a higher priority. So if we install rules with a priority of 2 for our first two rules and a priority of 1 for our last rule, that means that this particular packet will match both these rules but this rule has a higher priority, and so we'll end up sending this packet out port 2. There's two additional fields that are also applied to every single entry that exists within our flow table, and these are associated with timing out or having the switch automatically remove rules. The hard timeout field determines after what time after the switch rule was installed should the rule be removed. So, if we put in a hard timeout of 20 seconds, that means that 20 seconds after this rule was installed by the SDN controller, the switch will automatically remove this rule. If we put a hard timeout of 0 seconds, it means this rule will never automatically be removed by the switch. This rule will only be removed if it, the controller explicitly requests it. Now, we also have an idle timeout field. The idle timeout field says if no particular packet matches this entry for a given amount of time, then this entry should be removed. So, if we set an idle timeout of 5 seconds, that means if no packet destined for 10.0.0.1 is received for 5 seconds, this particular entry would time out. 
if we have packets that are arriving every seven seconds, that means that this idle timeout will take effect, and this particular rule will time out due to idle timeout. If instead our packets are arriving every two seconds, we won't hit our idle timeout, but we'll still hit our hard timeout such that the rule is removed 20 seconds after it was installed. Now, let's assume that we get a packet that ma doesn't match any of these particular rules. So, we'll assume that it's a UDP packet whose source is 10.0.0.100 and whose destination is 10.0.0.3. We're not going to match any of these rules based on destination or rule based on protocol. In this particular case, the default behavior of the switch is to send this packet to the SDN controller. Now, let's talk a little bit about what this controller is, how the controller is involved in controlling these SDN switches. The controller has a control channel that's a TCP connection with each of the particular switches. The core module and floodlight watches for these new TCP connections, and whenever a new TCP connection is established for a new switch, it raises a switch added event. Applications can subscribe to request certain events and react to those events appropriately. So let's assume that we have our application, which when an S switch is added, is automatically going to install a rule to send all TCP packets out the highest number port on that switch. So when our app or receives the switch added event, it can send a flow mod to the switch to install a particular entry with a particular match criteria, action, priority, and timeout into the flow table in that particular switch. Another event that we've already alluded to is this idea of a packet in event. When a packet doesn't match an entry in the flow table, or if an entry in the flow table specifically says that a packet should be sent to the controller, that packet will be sent as a packet in event to the core floodlight module. The core floodlight module will notify any applications that are interested in these packet in events. These applications can then install rules using flow mods or remove rules using flow mods based on the packet that was received. <coughs> the last type of event that we'll talk about is a link a discovery event. Here, Floodlight has a module called Topology Discovery. Topology Discovery module relies on special control packets being exchanged between SDN switches. When these packets are exchanged, when a switch receives one of these packets from another switch over this link, it'll notify the topology discovery module that it received one of these discovery packets. The topology discovery module will then generate a link discovery event and send this event to any applications that are interested in this particular event. So let's go through the full step of what happens as a review. First, when a switch first starts, it establishes a connection with the SDN controller and the core module in floodlight generates a switch added event and passes that along to any applications that are interested. Applications may respond to this event by issuing a flow mod command to a switch that installs a particular entry in that switch, which specifies match criteria over Ethernet, IP, or TCP and UDP header fields, actions, priority, and a hard and idle timeout. <coughs> we can also have link discovery events that are generated by the topology discovery module and forwarded to an application. Again, the application can issue flow mods to add and remove entries from this particular flow table. Lastly, when a packet comes into the flow table, we have it match against the entries that currently exist in the flow table and take the appropriate actions, which can include outputting out a particular port, dropping the packet, modifying header fields, or sending to the controller. In the event that we get a packet that doesn't match any entry in the flow table, we'll send a packet in event to the SDN controller. The core floodlight module will send this packet in event to our application, which can install or delete rules using flow mod events, just as we had when we had switch added and link discovery events. So this is how SDN switches perform and how a floodlight controller interacts with those switches.